Nous allons parler en général We will speak of general of man as the human being, what he represents, what he is from an earthly point of view and also a universal point of view, under the general theme of know thyself. Man is a universe, but as humanity has passed through inferior degrees of its consciousness, we don't know ourselves. But little by little, we are approaching an era where we will know ourselves better. And so through initiatic sciences and schools, we will learn how man works and what he represents. And so throughout these following weeks, we will meet together to speak about what we represent on a universal and cosmic level. Today we will speak about man, that is, at the threshold of a new era and of a new cycle called the Age of Aquarius. The theme of today will be man at the threshold of the Age of Aquarius. Next week we will speak about man is a microcosm because we find in him all of the universe in miniature form. And following this, we will develop very different subjects about how we are constituted, how our thoughts work, our emotional feelings and our physical bodies, what we represent on a higher level, what we represent as souls and spirits, how we come to the earth through different subjects where you will be invited to write and ask your questions if you wish, but if you are patient, perhaps after 39 weeks you will receive these answers. So let us start with this most general side and what is closest to us today because we are influenced by very new currents that have never existed on the earth before. And little by little we will learn how to know ourselves. We will also touch upon the themes of what is death, what is the soul, how we come to earth, prenatal education, what is the role of women in the preparation of this era for Aquarius, the preparation of a disciple, the work on our thoughts, what colors represent, how to work with music and other themes that you may be interested in or that you may propose eventually that touches upon man, our gland system, our chakras and other things. We may even come to, if we have time, to look upon the symbolism of the different parts of our body as the eyes, the nose, the mouth, the ears, the feet, and what these parts represent from an initiatic point of view and an esoteric point of view. For a very long time, this saying has interested human beings, the saying of know thyself. In ancient Greece, there was a beautiful temple, and on this temple, in Delph, Delphi, Greece, there was an inscription 
That said, know thyself. And the philosopher Socrates used this saying very much in his writings and teachings. And so throughout time, we have studied this, but from an exterior point of view. But today, the human thoughts have expanded a lot. And so today, to start this beautiful work, to know thyself, will be, we can do this passionately, to know thyself, know ourselves, through the different parts of the bodies, through the symbolism, and you will see to which point the universe is present in ourselves. As we will discover, in the eye there is the solar system, in the ears we will discover all of divine wisdom that is deposited in nature. We will discover in our mouths the principle of love that exists everywhere in the universe. And in our nose we will discover cosmic electricity. Through our glands, we will discover the correspondence with the etherical levels, energetical central stations that link us to the rest of the universe. And so there are many other interesting things that we possess, but that we are not yet aware of. Exactly as a child, who, before going to school, he knows a few objects, little toys that he has, but who made these toys, how everything works in the universe, even in his own country, he doesn't know anything yet. And so little by little, we can learn about this beautiful theme, Know Thyself. And so today, we will stop on this theme of a man at the threshold of the era of Aquarius. There have always been cycles, very small cycles, greater cycles, and bigger cycles that are outside of our reasoning and our comprehension. Small cycles are, for example, seconds, minutes, hours, days, nights, weeks, years, months, millenniums, cycles in nature, but outside of these there are other cycles that during only one human life, or even during one a cycle of civilization, we don't have methods to measure these yet really, but it doesn't mean they do not exist. When children ask us, what is air? I don't see it. Show me. It is difficult to show a child what is air. It is just a bit more challenging. It exists. And for us, it is the same. As in, for the things we do not see, it doesn't mean that they don't exist. And presently, the Earth is finishing many cycles that can be compared to seasons, that can also be compared to a human life. There are many cycles. There is childhood, there is youth, there is the adult age and old age. There are four seasons, just as in nature, through which men uh, lives and passes through. And so Earth is finishing today many cycles. Do not understand today li too literally. It can be maybe one century. 
For many people, it can be a part of their lives. But for the Earth, it is a, a bigger a cycle, and we will witness something that we haven't seen for many ages, which is the end of many cycles. You have perhaps heard of Lemuria or Atlantis, or even in history there, which have been presented in many interesting stories, the Noah's Ark, Arch. And so Earth has already gone through many cycles with endings and renewals, and we witness changes. For example, in autumn, people who take care of the Earth know this ending cycle and we gather everything that we have planted and the tree which has accomplished its work lets its leaves fall and the cycle is completed with a restful stage that happens during winter, and then in spring life renews itself. And so it will be the same, it is the same in the universe, with shorter and longer cycles. But what is interesting presently for the Earth is not that it is finishing only one cycle, but it is like many cycles at the same time. If you think of a, a cleaning woman that is working at home, one week for her is one cycle. When she finishes this cycle, in the olden days it was more common, every Saturday, every Saturday the cleaning was done for the house. If you arrived at this moment in the house, you would have found the chairs upside down on the tables, everything is in chaos because it was the big cleaning of the house. And so on the earth, it is the same thing. When a cycle is over, we clean everything in the house. And this cleaning is a bit stronger, visible and impressive than in one house. But everything seems to be upside down. And in chaos, everything is misplaced. If we look in families, society, associations, religions, something feels that is out of place and not correct as it used to be. And it, this is quite right because everywhere these cycles are finishing. And the earth itself is going through its own old age, and so everything is all over the place and th things seem to be upside down. And so this cleaning is happening on many different levels, not only in, on one level with one cycle, but juxtaposed with many other levels of cleaning, and therefore cycles. This is the first important thing that, as we know, all these cycles are finishing when we see these events happening around us on the earth, we will be less surprised. Just as perhaps in October, November, you change your, for your winter tires, you prepare firewood, you prepare the house to winterproof your house. And so when you are prepared, you welcome storms or winters or whatever may come. You go through winter with no danger. But if you are not prepared, one can freeze and die, and it can be very important. But as you are prepared, you can even be very comfortable and impressed on how beautiful outside looks during the winter time. And so we will see very odd events happening on the earth. 
because it is finishing these cycles. And so, this may provoke that the Earth may be influenced by certain currents and influences by energies that the Earth doesn't know yet or hasn't lived through. And these currents may be so strong that if we are not prepared, we may be shaken up or even more um, uneasy. And so this is why it is important to be aware of these things and also to prepare ourselves. And I know that you have this question, tell us how we should do this. So it will come, perhaps not today, but during these lectures we will speak about how to best prepare ourselves. So the first thing to know is that we are going through major changes. If we only look at this last century, things happened as have never happened before. If we consider the world wars or the concentration camps where millions of people have been tortured and died and extermined. Many things have happened, maybe we will mention it another time, but that have happened during this past century. There have been also a series of inventions that permitted humans to better communicate, to move farther distances, energies that we didn't know of before, the telephone, electricities, airplanes, things that ease our everyday life. But unfortunately, we abuse of these facilities instead of using them for more constructive purposes. Instead of using these inventions to benefit and enable us to elevate ourselves, and to know ourselves better also. And so these changes are here since a long time. And these changes will be even more visible. Every 2060 years, the Earth enters a new sign of the zodiac. You may have heard of the, the zodiacal circle that has and contains 12 constellations. And these constellations influence the, the Earth constantly. As a human being or an animal, uh, the vegetation or even the mineral world is influenced by these energies that we constantly receive and every 2,160 years, the Earth passes through one of these signs and so is influenced by a certain type of energy, and this energy links us links us and many geniuses, saints, extraordinary people will be influenced and inspired by these energies. Now we know that since the, since the birth of Jesus, for the, these past 2,000 years, the earth was under the influence of Pisces. And this energy is always brought by a being, by a great initiate that is prepared and has been prepared for centuries before his birth, who canalizes this energy for the rest of humanity. From a point of view of sciences, religion, wisdom, work and arts, everyone can benefit from these energies. 
that come from this sign in which the earth passes. And so from the birth of Jesus up to now, it was the era of Pisces. And at this moment, now, the, enter, the, the earth is entering the, the sign of Aquarius. I will show you an illustration where in the center there is a black dot, a black circle, and this is the earth, the representation of the earth. You see rays around it, and these are the cycles of the sun, where every ray can represent one day. And so, we are very used to this cycle of the year. Everyone knows the day of the new year. Every day we finish and restart a new cycle. Around this circle, you see the signs of the zodiac. Presently, the Earth is entering the sign of Aquarius that you see on your left, of the line that is vertical on the top, that represents either noon or midnight. So it is like it is like a clock. And so at the same time, on this clock, we can be finishing a second, a minute, an hour, a month, a year, a century, a millennium, and even greater cycles. And it is as though all these little hands are superposed, juxtaposed. And so the third circle is much bigger and it is divided into four parts. It is called the major cycle or round. And this represents the third greater cycle that the Earth is finishing and it lasts a million years. It is divided into four parts, as you see. 250,000 years each. And so, presently, we are finishing this last quarter. And at the same time, the whole cycle, which is a million years long. And so these 250,000, sorry. And so all of this is finishing. Apart from other cycles that are much smaller, the Earth is finishing now these two great cycles. And these needles, as if they were juxtaposed, this ending will be much stronger because many of these cycles are happening and ending at the same time. And so what interests us and what will be touching us has to do with our physical body, our energetic, our etherical body, all social and moral life and other manifestations that we have, all of society, even the surface of the earth, everything will be touched and changed because of these strong currents that these new signs are bringing to the earth. In the zodiacal circle, Aquarius is the only man, human being. 
There is a woman who is in Virgo, but all the other signs are animal forms. So in reality, the human humanity, us as humans, will come into our humanhood because up until now, our expressions were, our instincts were mostly guided by animal laws. And we will speak more about this, how we cannot master ourselves. We, it's difficult to control ourselves. So many things are beyond our reach. We, can, we don't know ourselves. And this is why we are still governed by the animal laws. And so presently, we will enter an era where man will know himself, where man will present himself everywhere in all of his dignity. There will be no more killing, there will be no more wars, no more destruction. And of all these abominable things that we have known until today, with all the inventions and progress, wonderful things that we have discovered, to be still plunged in human blood that flows in rivers and that soon will flow even more. When Pilatus showed Jesus, he said, you hear man, and man is written with a capital letter. Man today is still a creature that is governed by his animal instincts, still not able to create. Although there is an immense potential, and even if all the apparatus are installed, it is as though they are not plugged or turned on. Something is not in its place yet. And so, so very soon, with this era that will bring us very powerful currents, Man will become man in all of our dignity. And man, um, will be written with a capital letter, where the animal side will be tamed, transformed, and transmuted. And so Earth at this moment is going through a transmutation which is different from a transformation. Each era brings on transformation. There have been floods at the, in many eras, for Noah, for, in Atlantis, and prior to this, Lemuria. And all these changes were transformations. But now, today, Earth is going through a transmutation meaning that not only the form will change, but the very core of every atom, physical particle, will change its energetical frequency. And because of this, we may go through a little bit of shaking up, of of changes, but if we are aware of this, if we are prepared for this, this will be a pleasure to go through. It will be a joy to go through this major change, and it will be magnificent. There will first of all be changes on an inner level, and of course, as the exterior reflects, what is inside, we will also witness exterior changes. But as we are speaking of the human being, we will notice that we have earthquakes inside of us, we have floods on our emotional levels, and God knows how many floods we are going through in our emotional bodies. There will be fires which are on our mental level. So everything that is outside of us exists 
before anything inside of us and only after is it reflected outside. And so for these changes, little by little, even our cells are being prepared to transform through this era and through these energies that the Aquarius is bringing to us. The Aquarius is bringing a new era of science, but a science that we have never known before. A science that looks at the divine side in everything, enabling us to see every object in a new way, everything that, surround, that surrounds us, we will be able to see a new inner side of things and science will be able to measure and see it, to witness this. It will bring a sort of new religion which will be more of a universal religion which is expressed through a faith, a consciousness, an infinite faith that everything is inhabited by a divine awareness, something that we were not aware of before. But with this link that will be divine and religious, what we know today as clairvoyance, thanks to this inner perception that we will develop, will enable us to link with everything that exists in the universe. Through the pulse of our heart, we can also we will also be able to synchronize with the pulse of every living thing in the universe. When we approach a tree, we can know perhaps the integrity, life of a tree, the music of the tree that is circulating through its through its trunk. We will perhaps perceive the images that are hidden in a seed. The colors, the music of the seeds. We will be able to communicate with faraway stars, perceive life on the sun, to speak with the heart of the sun. Of course, we will be able to contact every human being. And this era of Aquarius will be so wonderful that we will know if there is someone at the other end of the world, if only one being is in suffering, we will feel this suffering inside of us. Our joys will not only be about our possessions of our car, TV, our little living room, separated from the rest, but our joy will be in common with all the other human beings, and our level of consciousness will be connected not only to all of humanity, but all of the universe. And so this characteristic of the era of Aquarius will be this link, this new consciousness, which will not be a dream state as it used to be. As we know today, biblical figures were very intuitive, but through, through dreams, during the night, they would receive revelations, but today the revelations that we will receive will be in daylight, will be conscious. Of course, we are preparing for this, and as Jesus told us, 
have a pure heart. He was thinking of this clairvoyance, because if the heart is not pure, if the motivation is not divine, we will not be able to see anything. He didn't say, do miracles intellectually and do great things, develop your powers. Everything will be present and come with this purity of the heart. There are many other wonders that are waiting for us. For example, there will be communication through our thoughts. This is evident that if we want to communicate with the entire universe, we will develop communication through our thoughts. We will develop energies that are unknown until today. One of these energies is a little known, which is solar energy. We will learn how to work with the sun. In previous civilizations, the sun was very well known. Those who know Zoroaster, per Persia, ancient Egypt, and those who even know the life of ancient Indians, will be in wonder how the sun was loved and known. And presently, we will discover a very special link with the sun, but we will speak about this later. This link outside of any energy that we know of, because there is a part of ourselves that exists on the sun. Therefore, discoveries and inventions, wonders, and what is named today as miracles, will enter in our daily life. And miracles will become permanent and common. The era of Aquarius will also bring transformations on every plane, also on the level of social life, moral life, values that we know of today. We will all be able to witness the crumbling of old values and see new values arise, values such as gold, because gold is the condensation of the light of the sun that condenses itself on earth. We are seeing its value go up, and always, more fortunate people would always wear gold on themselves. And perhaps we don't know this yet, but gold itself is a protection. As condensed light, gold emits very protective energies and wavelengths. And so if fortunate people and those who were able to buy it, this is why they always wore gold, and if we are able to wear it today, it is a vibration that comes from the sun. But this new value that is coming will not only be of gold, it will be the value of light, the light that comes from the sun. Also, in social life, in earthly life, there will be only one country with one governance where the human beings will be brothers and sisters as a brotherhood, a sisterhood and with all the wishes, the principles that Jesus has left us, we will finally be able to realize them and manifest them in this new age of Aquarius. On the earthly level, there will be one government 
We have to admit today that the earth is living in anarchy today. And this anarchy will be replaced with a beautiful harmony that is called synarchy. There will be an authority, a great master or an initiate with infinite knowledge, not only on the exterior level, but on the inner level, that will know of the principles, laws, laws of the universe, and this being will direct a government where there may be a council of execution with different boards that organize different areas of life. But this will be a perfect organization. From this higher point and perspective, everything will be able to be governed beautifully. Perhaps before, these ideas may have seen as a utopia. Many writers, people have written about this. But today there is a space where we can realize these beautiful things. We have often heard the term the kingdom of God, or others say a paradise on earth. And as these terms have been seen as utopic, that have been transmitted to us by great initiates, great masters, this side that was alive but also hidden because we weren't ready yet to realize this, this will now be able to be taught to human beings, and we will be available to be able to realize it on earth. And as Jesus, who was a great teacher, who has transmitted knowledge that we have no idea about yet, has given so much information on how to realize this harmony on earth, even questions about economy that is able to be so perfect that we will be in wonder of how we did not understand this yet. Perhaps it wasn't the moment yet. When we want to plant salad, if it's not the right moment, it will not grow. For any culture, if we plant it at the wrong moment, we will not have any results. So with philosophies and teachings, with sciences, with everything that we have been presented with until now, there have been many good things. Some things died away or became old, but everything that has become too old, we will leave it on the side. But everything that is still very potent, we will realize it, we will water it and make it grow. By who? By us all. But when we want to accomplish a work, anything at all, if we don't know of it, we cannot do it. If we ask, if we are asked very simple things, when do we plant carrots, or can you sew me a skirt, or building a house? If we ask someone who has no idea of how to do these things, we cannot do it, obviously. You may have seen a Chinese ball that is an ivory, that is sculpted in such an amazing way that in this ball there, there are 35 other balls, one in the other. You, and it is sculpted with flowers and when we place the balls in a certain way, we can see through it. And therefore, to accomplish a work such as this, we need a whole lifetime. 
But if someone is not competent and doesn't have the skills to make these um, beautiful balls, they won't be able to do it. And so there are wonders and wonders that are waiting for us during this age of Aquarius. But before entering, we have to do a clean-up inside of ourselves and a clean-up on the whole earth. How this inner work will present itself, how this inner cleaning will present itself, there are many new currents um, for people who want to become more aware of what they eat through being vegetarian. There is a new current of yoga, a current that brings us towards meditation and other currents, and therefore to study what we want to study. We have to understand that this is not hazard. If these currents are here and available to us, perhaps we cannot do everything at the same time. But to observe what we are drawn towards the most and to develop a bit of discernment to start accepting what these new currents are telling us. And perhaps we can adopt one or two methods that help us to create cleaning, cleansing inside of us as we let in these new currents. And we will speak about how do we accept the new what work it does on us. It does something very tangible and very precise through a new idea that comes in when we accept it. We start a whole alchemy inside of us, which is a transformation. Perhaps you noticed that at the moment when you accept something new, transformation happens inside. When you accept something, a lot of burdens become very easy and let go. And in the same way, when people want to oppose themselves and not let in these new currents, for some people around us, things seem to become crystallized and much harder for them. If you imagine a farmer near his house, there is a pile of compost. It may stink, There, you have to turn it, you have to transport it. When he accepts this compost, he places it where he needs to be, and this compost does a work on his fields, and it is a pure, it is amazing food for his crops. But if he doesn't want to do anything with this pile, it will attract bugs, smells, and it just becomes a, a big problem. And so, you may have also heard of extraterrestrial beings and how people react to this subject. Some people are very aggressive against this subject, and others, for others, it is very natural and it is not a problem. Some are in between and they will accept it in a few days or years. But knowing that there is no coincidence, we are able to analyze many things, but we rarely draw conclusions of what happens around us and in us. To draw a conclusion is 
to draw a lesson and a learning from these past experiences. Like the top of a pyramid, there is a light that is made and an understanding of this conclusion. Whereas when we do not draw conclusions, we kind of stagger at the bottom of the pyramid. And so it is always useful to make a th synthesis as we draw conclusions of all our experiences to be able to go onward, forward, towards other conclusions. And so to resume, we have to be aware and conscious that the whole earth will go through an ending. It has already started. The ending of many eras. And these changes are bringing new currents that are very powerful towards the Earth, that will influence our consciousness, our physical bodies, our different systems of glands, respiratory system, our circulation systems, and on. The Russians have discovered these new currents around, so scientists have discovered these new currents around the Earth, new frequencies, and so this means that there is something that is very real through these questions that we still may not be able to perceive completely. The transmutation that the Earth will go through will permit human beings to become a child of the universe before we were children of the Earth and our consciousness was very childish at a child level, just as when the child goes to school. The child can do a lot, can run, eat, breathe, but the awareness is still very limited. And humanity up to now is very comparable to this childish age, where we are still not yet admitted in the universal school. And thanks to the era of Aquarius that links us to the universal currents that are very powerful, we will be able to enter a universal school that we will call here on Earth the Divine School. And thanks to our inner perceptions, we will discover the heart of everything that exists in the universe, we will link to these hearts and we will be in awe as we work and this work will become a creation. We will not be creatures, but we will become creators. And so this era of Aquarius will enable us to become creators. On the vib vibr vibration level, everything will change. On the level of atoms, everything that exists in the physical plane, the frequency of matter will change. Up to now, the speed through which we walk, let's say it was at 220, but we will enter a current and a speed that is perhaps 50,000. And so we will try to take in and submit and process all these new currents and adapt because if we are not prepared, these currents can be, um, they could be very dangerous if we are not yet prepared for a higher voltage, let's say. And so this new energy level will bring changes on 
the earthly crust, but also in all the manifestations of life on earth. And people are asking, are we going to survive? <laughs> Certainly, because we will prepare for this and we will become witnesses and actors that will accomplish marvelous things and creators creating the kingdom of God on earth. And it is for the first time that our participation will be conscious. There have been eras where humanity has realized and installed, thanks to its guides of harmonious governments, and it has realized many beautiful things on the earth. But our consciousness was not quite well tuned in. We participated as children participate, but we were well guided. But now, where we are today, it, through our willpower, our efforts, and even thanks to our knowledge, we will realize the most beautiful dreams that poets, that saints and geniuses have had and transmitted to humanity. Now we will be able to realize them on earth and it will become a new earth, an earth where life will stop disappearing, where life will become eternal, and ourselves we will be students of this divine school and learn to speak, to sit, to work, to love, to communicate with the universe, and mostly to create. And so, the threshold is not outward. It is, first of all, inside. There are already human beings on this earth that have realized the kingdom of God inwardly. We will speak about this more. Everything must be realized inwardly first, and only then can it be realized outwardly. We will speak about the apparatus that we know of, which are exterior to what we possess already inside. But these tools are not plugged or used yet, and when we will know how to do this, we will accomplish marvelous things.